It is now 9.51. And so at this time, it's a, a, a real pleasure to enter, uh, introduce uh, Emily, Michael, and David uh, to chat about uh, their, the course that they offer uh, through Laurentian University, Sustainable Northern Ontario Economic Development. Uh, and so uh, I don't know uh, who's going to come on first, uh, but I see Michael's uh, pleasant face from Nova Scotia. <laughs> well, Mac, uh, thanks for inviting us. We're delighted. Uh, I'm going to do a few of the uh, beginning slides, and then David will uh, talk directly about the course. And uh, so we're ready to roll. Uh, just by way of introduction, uh, I've spent, uh, well, pretty much 50 years in the publishing business, all of it uh, to a greater or lesser extent in Northern Ontario. And... Uh, so uh, I have had an opportunity to see the world from the point of view of uh, uh, Thunder Bay and uh, Nipigon and Terrace Bay Scriber and uh, Sudbury, of course, Perry Sound and uh, North Bay and various other markets where we were able to, uh, uh, to publish for many, many years. Um, so uh, a... a a point of view on the basis of economic development has been something that's been a part of my life, my working life um, for many, many years. And the same with David, who has been teaching for some 30 years economics and very much an activist in the Sudbury uh, marketplace in terms of his research and his abilities, which is how we came together. I would just like to say that it's 45 years ago that Sudbury faced probably the worst year of its life when uh, Inco was laying off thousands and thousands of people. The union decided that uh, they would go on strike. It ended up being the longest strike in Canadian history and the most expensive. The community was uh, on its uh, back feet for many years as a result. It also had an extraordinary uh, opportunity and got lucky and took it. And it was called Sudbury 2001. And it was a time when everything looked dark and everybody in the economic and education and labor field came together in spite of the strike around the table for Sudbury 2001 sat the two very strident labor leaders sat the president of Vinco in Falconbridge, sat the mayor, Jim Gordon, sat the chairman, Doug Frith, sat the president of the university, and on down the line. And it was my uh, great uh, honor to co-chair this group with uh, the head of the uh, Labor Council at that time. And it, uh, it marked both a difficult time for Sudbury and uh, a brand new beginning where it moved from being a mining camp where labor and business were at one another's throats to working together. And the transformation in Sudbury over the last 50 years has been extraordinary. It gives me great, uh, great pleasure to see the powerful women that have been presenting here today uh, on the incredible um, uh, projects that you're working on but I would say to you that the, um, uh, the EV uh, strategies of Sudbury today are based on the, are standing on the shoulders of the 10 million trees project that started in Sudbury 40, 40 years ago uh, with the combination of the university in Sudbury 2001. And, just, and to, to plant 10 million trees and 45 years later be looking at uh, uh, elect our, our place, our role, and accepted and expected to play our role in the uh, transformation of the uh, economy is uh, extraordinary. So it's a wonderful day for that. So why are we here today? We're here to talk about a course um, that uh, David has created, and it came from uh, uh, an investment I made, and I brought uh, a variety of people together 15 years ago, might be more, to invest in David because 
of that Subby 2001 experience. Uh, we realized that we had been lucky at that time uh, to have an extraordinary combination of politicians and uh, uh, executives in the municipal uh, 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 sector to uh, to take on this greatest crisis in Sudbury's uh, history, but that we couldn't rely on good luck and good fortune. And we wanted to uh, institutionalize to a certain extent some of the uh, precepts that we took on and that we, uh, I think, learned over the years in Sudbury about having to take responsibility for yourself because nobody else is going to take responsibility for you. And uh, uh, so this course uh, speaks to that uh, 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 feeling and that uh, momentum. Uh, and it was meant in, in the original instance to be uh, a graduate school of economic development, but it did not, uh, for a variety of reasons, the university was unable to, to move that forward. And so three years ago, those of us that invested in David, we decided, well, we'll just do it ourselves. If we're, if we're preaching that, why don't we do it ourselves? And so uh, we put our money up. Uh, we decided that it would made more sense to work with the Northern Policy Institute at that time uh, because it's a pan-Northern organization, because it's dealing with uh, municipalities every day of the week. And so it made sense for them to work with us, joint venture with us, and to promote uh, this course. Uh, maybe we could uh, change the slide, uh, Emily. Uh, uh, if you, uh, and we'll circulate, uh, and I think Mac could circulate your connection to, uh, uh, to our splash page, which describes the course in detail, and also to our website, which we have uh, built over, uh, over the last couple of years. Um, it's basically a course, uh, we have two of them. We have a, a broad brush uh, course, which has been taken now by some 60 people. Um, we have a, uh, uh, a more sophisticated deeper dive course that we're looking at uh, launching uh, into in, in uh, 2023. Um, uh, so, uh, the uh, if we just move ahead on the next slide, uh, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, these uh, this is 37. This uh, slide is a little bit old. We're now at uh, close to 60 people that have taken part of the course. Um, but it involves uh, we go everywhere from Sudbury Tim and Sault Ste. Marie to Moonbeam to Manitowash to Horn Payne to Wawa. People from a tremendous variety of circumstances have taken this course, and they've had the opportunity not only to to uh, to to have a conversation with David, uh, but they've had an opportunity to meet with many other presenters that David has brought in um, to contribute to the to the knowledge that we have about where we live, what the uh, economic uh, peculiarities are, and how do you get to work in both small and large towns to, to make your, your community more sustainable. Uh, next slide, uh, please. <clears throat> uh, this here is our uh, website. On this website, you will find uh, a number of things. Uh, probably the most interesting, and in a way sometimes boring, to be honest with you, is that we have interviewed more than uh, nearly 60 people, probably more than 60 people, all of these people have changed history in Northern Ontario, one way or another. And uh, David uh, has uh, integrated uh, many of the uh, high points of the history of these people into his teaching. Uh, but this is meant to be a place where if you care about these things, you can go and you can, uh, uh, you can learn about firsthand um, you know, what happened in Dubreville or what happened in Wawa or what happened in White River when after 10 years they reopened their um, their uh, pulp and paper facility because the mayor said, I will I will get this done. Many of you know that story. So, so the website which supports this course uh, 
is meant to be a, a place where anyone can go and get more information. We also include latest research papers from the Northern Policy Institute. Uh, we include uh, uh, a publication that I used to own, uh, just sold a couple of years ago, Northern Ontario Business. Um, uh, I should say that the people I sold this uh, business to uh, have provided this website free of charge to, uh, um, to our group. Um, and that's Village Media, which we're very grateful for uh, for that offer. And we also run newsletters and all sorts of things through this website. So you're, of course, all welcome to go to it. But why we're here is to persuade you to either take this course or to uh, allocate um, uh, people on your staff or talk to uh, colleagues of yours in council um, to take this course because we think that you'll know more when you're done. And let's move to the next uh, slide, Emily, and it's over to David to describe the course in particular. David. Okay, um, I've been teaching economics in Northern Ontario since 87, and I've been doing economic development research and work since 1990. I guess it was when I started the a big project on the layoffs in Elliott Lake. One of the things I discovered was at Laurentian, loyal to, to the North, I, I wanted to see us doing the teaching in economic development because we didn't do it. Nobody in Northern Ontario was doing it. The course in, for economic development people in Northern Ontario was coming out of Waterloo good course. Almost nothing in it about Northern Ontario. I know that because I used to be the person who came in and did the local version to tell people something about Northern Ontario. And I thought it was terrible that the university was letting that money go out of the province to another university to sell a product that didn't tell people what was special about Northern Ontario. Um, it didn't tell people what was sustainable development. It really didn't get around to the best advice economists could give about how to develop an, a resource exporting region like this. It was really focused on the kind of agricultural southern municipalities. Um, it didn't, talk, it, the course was good, but I thought we should be doing it ourselves. And I tried for years to get Laurentian to do that. Finally, with Michael's help, we got a course built originally at Laurentian with all of the course support work that Laurentian could do. And that's what we're offering now. Laurentian got into a little bit of trouble, as you know, and, and kind of lost its focus. So we have a course that's aimed at a couple of things. One of them is making sure people understand a lot about Northern Ontario. Another is connecting them to other people who are doing economic development in Northern Ontario. A third is bringing together the, the best theory and the best experience that's available. And it's a delight, actually. I've had now a series of courses with people from municipalities right across the North and a few from outside who are really, really interested. And I believe, really feel they're getting a lot out of looking at this place where they're working as a special place with special problems, needing the special approaches and needing the kind of collaboration you guys have been talking about in this session. Um, what more can I say about this? Well, people like it. People find it useful. I have them do an assignment on a project about their own community, if that's what they they want, or something that's professionally re relevant. The guests we bring in are wonderful. We bring in people from all across the North to talk about things that they've done, problems they've encountered, their experience. Um, what else do I want to say here, Michael? I, I would really I see all of you in that class because you have something to contribute as well as something to, to the course, as well as something to learn from it, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, 
I I just have to say that uh, David has done a phenomenal job, and and some of the richness that uh, emerges from the course, of course, is 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 working directly with David to develop projects, which is part of the course. We had an extraordinary conversation the other day, uh, other day with uh, 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 some colleagues from the University uh, of Hearst who are going to be teaching this course in French, commencing in January, and. Uh, uh, it was very, very exciting uh, to see the uh, commitment to uh, just getting better together, to standing on one another's shoulders and uh, making sure that as we move forward with this course, we're able to um, um, to share best practices from around the world, which we're researching, and uh, from around Northern Ontario. I think the uh, next slide, uh, Emily, is probably... As a, uh, I, I should talk, and this is uh, not so much for today, but we've been talking with uh, Mac and with uh, previous uh, members of the board and the executive committee about uh, and having uh, Phnom uh, offer uh, this course and uh, sharing some revenue with them. Uh, just uh, because, my goodness, uh, we think that's what you should be doing: is uh, is teaching. Um, not only our own people, but uh, teaching uh, some of the deputy ministers and some of the uh, uh, executive folks that uh, are involved with Northern Ontario all the time. Um, so that we really understand the challenges and the opportunities. Um, <clears throat> I think rather than go on, uh, we would, uh, Dave and I would be delighted to answer any of your questions and we would be, uh, it would be, uh, our pleasure to uh, try to persuade you to help us fill our next course in February. Thank you so much, Mac. I am just trying to get back the host details from Emily. So just uh, bear with me, everybody, just for a second. Uh, Um, there we go. I'm back being the host. Okay. Thank you. So uh, again, if anybody does have a question, I'd ask you just to uh, directly uh, put them into the uh, to the chat function. Um, one of the comments uh, that I'd like to make is that uh, I've been a city councillor with the city of North Bay for uh, for almost 20 years now, and. Uh, in our first, my first year, um, the council of the day thought it would, uh, we could just do it ourselves. We could just rely on our MP and our MPP. Uh, and we didn't need the phenoms. We didn't need the Amos of the world. We didn't need the Romas of the world. We didn't need our surrounding communities uh, to work collaboratively with them, uh, that we were a, a big, strong city and we could just do it on our own. Um, and you know we we called a press conference we invited everybody in the world to come and and to tell them how how good we were as a, as a as a council and that we were just going to reshape the whole world uh the next morning we regained consciousness <laughs> um we realized that um we can't just do it ourselves we realized our mistake um we had um, uh, we and so the city of North Bay has a great relationship um, with our, I think, I believe, in my opinion, a great relationship with our surrounding communities. Um, I've been a board member and an active board member of Phnom and AMO um, for a great many years. Some say too long. Uh, but the fact is, is that um, um, we, we have... Uh, we have other councillors that are serve on other organizations. Uh, we heard earlier today, Aaron Richmond working well with 1DC and, and its partners around uh, the north. And so uh, programs like yours, David, um, uh, are, are sharing those stories. And I think it's, it's really important that we get to uh, have um, a, a program like yours. I can tell you that Phnom, uh, uh, at our most recent meeting, will uh, work with you uh, to promote this program, continue to promote this program. Uh, we'll also, we're not interested in revenue sharing. I uh, put that money back into the program to promote uh, the program itself. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll have a link to your program on our website. 
uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll work with you and, and share your message with our membership. So uh, again, uh, I, I want to thank you for, um, uh, for, for presenting. Now, can, um, to my point in, in regards to re relationship building and working together, are there some examples that you've gathered uh, over your time, David or, or Michael, um, that uh, uh, have people uh, that show people working collaboratively together? Oh, my goodness, there are so many. Uh, I, I'll tell one and I'll give one to, to David, but um, the School of Architecture in uh, Sudbury is a result of community action. David was in the middle of that. David is the one that did the original research that uh, really uh, established the bounds of the extraordinary mining cluster in Sudbury. And he came to me, and that's how I put out a, a publication called Sudbury Mining Solutions Journal to support it. Because the interesting thing in Sudbury is that, and around, is that nobody believed there was a cluster. And most of the people in the cluster were, uh, they didn't want to work too closely because they wanted to hire people from one another because they were competitive. And they didn't see it, uh, and we heard this from you and from others this morning, the importance of working together. They didn't see uh, how that would be. But as a result of David's work, we put out a magazine that 15 years we've been running that magazine. It's still uh, uh, going strong as a digital magazine. And it had a, an incredible effect. We had the Sudbury Mining Solutions group that came together and we're doing uh, joint uh, marketing around the world. We had uh, uh, deputy ministers that actually began to think, oh, maybe Sudbury is uh, is the center of the world for this kind of thing. And it all came from David's research and then a collaboration between myself and uh, uh, the wonderful Dick Stefano, who uh, passed not that long ago and put a group together. So this is uh, David's doing, and uh, this is an amplification of some of the work we've done in the past. Uh, David? <laughs> Uh, pretty wonderful, actually, to hear the progress on the mining supply cluster here and across northern Ontario and connecting it to the rest of the world. That came out of research that was actually funded by um, Northern Ontario Heritage Fund, I think. That was Pat um, Murfield came to me and said, nobody's doing any research on this stuff. Would you do some? We'll give you some money to do it. <laughs> and I said no originally. Then then decided to hire somebody to do most of the real work. And we discovered at that point 150 firms in Sudbury and an, another 30 around the region. And over the next few years, you want to talk about collaboration, the amount of collaboration that came together to make it, for instance, the main driver in Sudbury's economic development strategy, increased support from um, the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund and from the federal support. The collaboration in the community, Dick, Mike, oh, I, could, I could go on about this, to draw attention to the region and, in, and that particular major opportunity we have was terrific. Mike gives me too much credit. I did the academic research. I explained it to everybody. Um, I helped hold some meetings together for a while when people kept saying, no, that can't possibly be true. Eventually, it's, it's become something everybody accepts and they forget where they learned about it. And, and the reason is people like Michael and Dick jumped on board and did the work. So it's one of my favorite examples, but I have to say the School of Architecture is another one. Decided that we didn't have design capacity in the North to develop our forestry industries. Pulled a bunch of people together, not just in Sudbury. Created a School of Architecture that's brought 300 students in and uh, 40 odd jobs directly in the School of Architecture helped renovate the downtown. These projects all revolve around either luckily or brilliantly bringing people together. And I have to say people like Michael and later um, people like Mac and others that you know have 
sort of focused attention on that job of building the capacity in the community and the support. Uh, sorry, I, I'm starting to lecture. I, I apologize. Um, <laughs> what? More recently, there's lots of others. Uh, one I'd like to tell you a little bit about is a project to get bicycle tours on Manitoulin Island that actually was initiated by somebody who was taking the course with me. I asked for a project, she did the project, and now that project's underway. Um, it's just a tourism project, but it brings work and it diversifies people's income. Those are collaborations among people who are interested in this in this set of issues. It We need places for them to get together and the course turns out to be one of those. And so you would, you're, so your, your course not only, it brings, you know, 20 students together, gives them an opportunity to listen and share, share ideas and, and to bring perspective uh, on, uh, and some of your students, I understand, are actually working in communities uh, that may even be on this call. Uh, and uh, as economic development officers, and, and they have, uh, they're there to uh, to hone their skills and to learn from others. Is that, am I, oh, do yeah, I understand have, that correctly? We have students in Sudbury and Timmins and North Bay and, and half a dozen other communities right now. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is Mac was one of our guests. And what he did that was really wonderful is he talked about the relationship between economic development planning and the people to who actually work in it and the council members. And this is something that just, it, it's something everybody working in the field has to learn. And I think the students in the class really appreciated getting an insider's view with the kind of experience Mac has of that interaction. I think it makes them more effective in working with their council. And so I'd like to thank Mac for that, but it's an example of the kind of things that we bring to the class and people take from the class. Uh, and if I could add something there, uh, Mac, uh, the Northern Ontario is full of unbelievably heroic uh, struggles to try to salvage work usually it revolves around work and uh, the the story of the adams mine battle just to keep toronto's garbage from polluting the groundwater up uh, in that neck of the woods it was 10 years of struggle extraordinary struggle and it's so creative charlie angus wrote a book about it i didn't know until we did this course i didn't know how long and how hard that battle was um, I remember when uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, I'm trying to think of in campus casing when the uh, uh, what's the name of the company and the, the big company in campus casing they well, they went bankrupt at one point and they might have stayed bankrupt if it wasn't for how the mayor of uh, of campus casing went to went to battle. One day I was driving my bike up in Toronto. I used to go back and forth between Toronto a lot where I had some other businesses. And uh, I saw this huge group of people on Queens Park. And who was it? They were from Capus Casing. I felt like it was old home week. And uh, they brought together. It was, uh, uh, they had uh, trailers and camps. And they weren't going to leave until uh, Bob Ray at that time decided to change his mind uh, about that particular plant. Uh, so what you see in the stories uh, of the 60 people we've interviewed on that website is one of struggle and excitement and enthusiasm and innovation. And I think that people... Whether you take the course or not, I think you should go to that website because you'll see the people that did things that uh, are very, very exciting. And uh, happily, those examples will be there forever, we hope. Well, I, I want to thank um, 
Emily for being the host and uh, not disconnecting the whole meeting, uh, which which is one of my fears uh, as I <laughs> host meetings like this. Uh, but I also want to thank uh, both uh, Michael uh, and David for uh, not only uh, the work that they've done on behalf of Northern Ontario and educating us and and, and telling us a story in, in Michael's case by all of his publications. Uh, but also for the uh, for creating a course like this that we can that t uh, trains our uh, economic development officers um, with the um, uh, of what happened. Tell us, tell them the history of Northern Ontario, uh, and then also tell them uh, to work collaboratively uh, so that all of Northern Ontario can benefit uh, from uh, from that history learn together and move forward so it's an important it's glad i'm glad it's there uh, and i'm uh, glad that the two of you had uh, uh, had stuck it out and and created this program and and are pushing it and and working reaching out to phenom and noma um uh, northwestern ontario municipal association um uh, to, to so that we can all work to, uh, with you uh to uh, for the benefit of our communities in northern ontario so I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day uh, to chat with us. Yeah, 